Last time I showed you guys how to apply different types of common nail art, one being 3D pieces, some embedded foil, and also some embedded glitter. And I hope that tutorial was really helpful. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to remove 3D pieces. So I wanted to go over today how you're going to remove 3D nail art. This is one of those things that I feel like there aren't a lot of tutorials about what to do after you already have something on your nails and I've tried really hard to make sure that every time I show you how to do something I show you how to undo it. So I wanted to follow up today and show you guys how I would go about getting these 3D pieces off. Now I'm going to show you two different methods. I like to use an e-file. So I'm going to show you how I use my e-file to take off 3D art. This is definitely the most efficient, the quickest way, um, and I actually think it's the safest way, believe it or not. But I'm also gonna show you how to do it with just um, a nail file and also some nippers. So let me show you my preferred method first, and I'm just gonna um, remove half of these if I can. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna use a bit that is a carbide, um, and carbide are like this. So let me just show you an example. Okay, so if you guys have watched my previous videos on bits, carbides are like these. Um, this is like one of those kind of dull teeth carbides or you, their, their actual proper name are flutes. The teeth that you look at are called flutes. Um, I like to refer to them as teeth just so that people understand what the heck I'm talking about. And I use a lot of analogies on my channel to help demonstrate and explain what things are. So this is an example of a carbide, um, but you can also see that there are lots of different styles of carbides. And carbides are just the metal bits that, it's a big family of metal bits that all have actual carved in teeth on them, okay? If you see bits that are grainy, like here's an example of a grainy bit, they don't have teeth on them, they're just like metal particles that are stuck onto the shaft. This is actually done through a process called electroplating, where these little tiny particles, they can be made of metal, they can be made of you know, all types of different um, precious stones. Um, diamond is why they call it diamond bits. Um, and there's varying percentages of different materials that they actually electroplate onto these metal shafts. So diamond bits are completely different and I don't recommend diamond bits um, unless you're working on skin or nail plate or very, very delicate areas. The reason being is that diamond is really kind of a grinding. It's not so much of a shaving. And if we do a bunch of grinding, it's not gonna get very far on top of product. Um, it creates a lot of heat and it creates a lot of vibration and friction. So the bits that I like to use are carbides. Now, here's a couple different options and they have different shapes, obviously. There are probably infinite combinations of shapes, teeth styles, everything. Um, but today I'm gonna show you guys actually a newer bit that we've got coming to the Nail Hub soon. You guys have seen me use one of my faves, which is the uh, the Typhoon. This is the Typhoon. And the one on the right is actually a two-way bit, it's medium. This one we have brand new coming very, very, very soon. Um, and this one you can see the teeth are just a little bit more spaced apart, a little bit wider. And so this is gonna help me shave product. The other thing I always use, which let me find them really quick. I always wear, anytime I'm working with 3D pieces or removal of nail art or nails, I always wear safety glasses. So here are just some plain, they're just fake plastic. I don't wear prescription, but you could absolutely get yourself some scratch resistant pres prescription glasses if you wear prescription. But I always recommend that you protect your eyes whenever you're working with nail art and whenever you're e-filing because stuff can just fly all over the place, okay? And if you wanna make them cute, you can put some crystals on them. These are actually ones <clears throat> that a fellow nail tech had made for me a long time ago, and they are just so cute with the crystals on them. So you can get wild and crazy and put crystals on some cheapo fake plastic glasses. Literally, you can get these on eBay, Amazon. I mean, all different kinds. Wish probably has some. All you need are, are like inexpensive fake glasses and I recommend that you choose a style that has a larger lens 
so that it actually covers more of your eye area. If you get like little teeny ones, then stuff might still be able to fly around the plastic and get into your eye, okay? So get yourself some safety glasses before you start e-filing. And I'm actually gonna put these on myself, okay? And then what you may also need, which I will show you more when we do the hand style um, without the e-file, but like a more manual way of getting nail art off, you also need some nippers. Now, these are just like generic no-name nippers. You can see they have a huge jaw on them. Um, normally, I like to work with nippers that are like a quarter of an inch if I'm going to be doing any skin work. Um, and you guys have seen that in my previous videos. These are like cheap, 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 giant nippers. And I only use them for removing nail art. I don't, or sometimes cutting forms, but I never use them on skin. These are not intended for skin. They're not sharp enough for skin. Um, you can see like how dull they are and they actually over time, the reason why we don't use the same nippers, why I don't recommend using the same nippers for um, skin as you do for nail art and stuff is over time, the blades can actually get completely dented, dinged up, dull. And so we wouldn't want to use this on skin because we don't want to tear or anything. We want to, you know, be able to trim properly. And I also never really... Um, you know, clean these, like sanitize them. I mean, I'll dust them off, um, but I only use these to remove nail art pieces or, you know, to work with nail product, like nail forms, etc. Okay. So we will need these potentially, whether you're e-filing or not. So I'm going to put those over here. So I'm going to bring my, my finger back. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out is in last week's video, I showed you guys how to apply this. And so this is still in the same position as it was last week, because this is not a real finger. For those of you that get freaked out, these are fake fingers. I know I've gotten some comments, um, but these fake fingers are awesome for practicing. And so obviously this nail did not grow. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull this out ever so slightly. Hopefully that doesn't freak anybody out. I'm just gonna pull this out ever so slightly <clears throat> to pretend that we've got two weeks growth, okay? Because normally when we have someone come back and we're gonna remove nail art, we're not going to be working on nail art that's right up by the cuticle area. And that's very important um, to consider because we don't want to be, you know, either jabbing our client with nippers or jabbing ourselves. Um, <clears throat> so that's something to consider is just that you want to make sure that your placement of nail art, like even when it was two weeks ago, remember, I didn't have it like this close to the skin. I had to leave some space so that I was able to get the gel around those pieces and allow that stuff to be protected even when it grows out. And this is exactly what happens is that the nail grows out two or three weeks later and then we do have this regrowth area. And this is why it's so important to make sure you get gel back here behind the pieces because as the snail grows out, we don't want to have those pieces catching on hair and clothing and stuff like that. So even two or three weeks later, this gel is gonna be perfectly smooth and those pieces are gonna stay intact, okay? So that is the secret behind getting those pieces to stay is that we need to also factor in being able to get product around them on all sides. So let's pretend this nail has grown out two, you know, two to three weeks depending on the client and how fast their nails grow. Um, and now I'm going to e-file off this side of the pieces and I'll show you exactly how I do that. So I am going to take, I really like bits like this. Um, and again, I'm going to be doing more with this later. I just wanted to use this today to kind of prep you guys for us adding a whole bunch of new bits to the, the website. Um, but I really like this style. I haven't come up with a name for this one yet, to be honest. So if you guys have suggestions for this bit name, it's actually got like a dark gray color to it. I don't know if you guys could see that compared to like some of the other bit colors. See how it's like dark gray. So if you guys have a cool name for this bit, we are going to be adding it to the site. I have not named it yet. Right now it's just got a serial number. Um, and I'm going to put it in my e-file. Okay. And then I am actually going to turn this almost all the way up on my machine um, because it isn't sharp and it doesn't have a sharp tip on it. And what I really want it to do is I want it to be able to shave off this product and get rid of this little piece. And I do have my safety glasses on just so you guys can see. I do have my safety glasses on because I want to make sure that if this little piece flings off of the nail, it's not going to smack me in the face or get in my eye. Now, we don't really have to worry about this going in the client's face because this bit is going to be rotating towards me. So if anything, it's going to fling upward into my facial area. So clients, you know, don't have to worry about it as much. Okay, so let's turn this on. 
I have it in forward, okay? And I have it almost all the way up on my machine. So we're probably talking like 15,000 RPMs right now. Now, if you don't have a very high torque e-file, which means high torque, and I've talked about this on my previous e-file videos, um, but torque is the ability for your e-file to keep filing even when there is pressure. So it's basically the ability for this bit to continue to spin. And even though I'm going to put pressure on the product with my bit, my e-file is able to continue filing with the same amount of force, whether or not I'm touching product. So you won't hear my e-file change in pitch because my e-file is able to continue to file, um, you know, no matter basically what I'm filing on. If your e-file, you hear it where it's like a high pitch, and I'll just be quiet for a second so you guys can hear. Okay. So if your e-file, when you start to file on something, if you hear it slow down, and they call that getting bogged down, if you hear it slow down when you touch the nail, it means that your e-file doesn't have very much torque. And so what happens with that is that we often have to speed up the, the actual spin and um, you know don't put too much force on the finger because then you'll end up wrapping it around your finger, stuff like that. Um, but just wanted to point that out. And I have, I have done several videos about this in the past. So what I'm gonna do is, since this is a fake finger, I kind of have to hold this nail down while I do this. But normally when I'm working on a client, I always put my finger back and cover their cuticle area. You can do this with gloves on if they're tight gloves, or you can do this without gloves on. I'm just doing gloves right now because I'm testing some product that I can't show you guys on camera. So I'm wearing gloves for most of these videos. Um, but I always kind of use my own hand to protect their cuticle skin just in case my bit does go backward and touches their finger, I wanna make sure that it hits my finger, not their finger. And this bit is, um, you know, it is very gentle, so it's not going to cut the person at all. But if you are using one of those kind of sharper carbides, just keep that in mind. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, these are metal and plastic. And so what I'm gonna try and do is just focus to get most of that gel away from around the pieces. And these plastic ones, you'll see it even flings off like that, okay? The metal ones are a little bit harder because they don't really, like the plastic, you'll see it completely just shaves down and it starts to come off. The metal is a little bit more difficult. So what I usually do is I just go around the metal bit, the, sorry, the metal piece, and I just loosen the edges. And then usually you can either e-file over the top and it'll come right off. I'm just gonna go down and kind of remove the excess gel that I've got on here as if I were doing the whole nail. And then if you just catch the edge, the little piece will pop right off. Can you guys see that? So let me just take off this little bead here so you can see that as well. So plastic beads tend to come off because they just get shaved down. Um, metal pieces usually tend to, you like take off the gel that's on top of them and then pretty soon they come off themselves. They kind of flick off. And so let me just show you really quick. Here is the little metal triangle that was on the nail. So you can see like one corner kind of got shaved off and then it just flicked upwards. And that's why I really like using bits like that with those specific type of teeth because they very gently shave without causing a lot of heat and they're not sharp, and also the teeth tend to catch on those little pieces once they're exposed and pop them right off. So I didn't even have to use my nippers. So let me dust this off. So y'all can see, okay. So that is what it looks like, is that I got off that one bead that was over here, I got off the triangle, and I got off part of this bead that's here. And you can still see that there's quite a bit of gel over these other pieces. Now, what I would do is exactly this, which is, I would keep filing over the whole nail if I was doing this. I get I focus on the pieces first because they're the highest point on the nail. I bring those down, get them off, and then I continue filing just as if I would, you know, to remove an overlay, um, as I've shown you guys in my previous videos where we e-file off the color in order to backfill the clear gel that's underneath. But you can see that my e-file was able to very quickly get those off and also, um, you know, I can go in immediately into the rest of the nail and start filing off the gel and the color, okay? Um, so let's talk a little bit about how we would do this if we were going to be doing this manually. And I wanted to point out really quick that I do this same e-file process, whether I'm doing this on soak off nails 
or I'm doing this on nails that I'm not soaking off, regardless of the product you're using. So whether this is someone who keeps, you know, an overlay on their nails or they have extensions, or this is just a gel polish manicure that I'm gonna soak off with acetone, I would still do this same process because it allows me to get all of that stuff off, all those pieces. And also with my e-file, I can get through the product to etch it and, and get the acetone to be able to penetrate. And I've shown you guys that in my e-file removal video, um, you know, on gel polish manicures and how much that speeds up the soak off process. So this is why I like using an e-file is because it speeds up everything no matter what type of service that you're working on. Okay, so I just have a nail file here that I've been using for some practice stuff and I'm gonna show you guys really quick. So I would recommend you use um, at least 180 grit file. I typically use one file per client. So I like to use 180 grit file, um, it's okay if it's 100, 180, you know, 100 being on one side, 180 on the other, but I typically use one nail file per client, and I use that same nail file throughout the whole entire service. So that is something that I have always factored into my costs. Um, I don't like reusing nail files, um, so just so you guys are aware that that's exactly how I use my nail files, and that's what I use, just 180 grit. And so what I'm going to do is because I'm not using an e-file, I'm gonna go right over the surface of these pieces and I'm gonna try and expose the pieces through the product. And this process takes a while because I've got gel on there protecting these pieces. Now you can, you can focus your nail file also to get kind of like to expose this corner. So see how the gel is, it's the piece is already kind of breaking through that gel right there. And then right there, I've got one little tiny hole. But here you can see the metal poking through the gel. Okay, so that's what we want is we don't want to expose it. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll try and file like right in front of the piece or right on the side, depending on the shape or where it's located to expose one of those corners for myself. Because once I get one of those corners lifted um, and exposed, then I can, I can use my nippers to kind of pry that off. And this is definitely something that changes depending on what type of pieces you used, how much product you put on top of them, the location of the pieces. Um, so you really wanna just take your time, gently do this, keep the file moving, just like we do with e-filing, keep the file moving around the finger because the more friction we cause and the thinner the nail is, especially if we're working on natural nails, there's gonna be a lot of friction which causes heat and we don't wanna you know, create that sensation of heat on our client's nail, okay? So I don't use a ton of pressure. I just keep moving. And you can see this is why I don't like doing things the manual way. I know e-filing scares a lot of people, but really, honestly, it is the best way to do nails, especially if you're doing nails professionally. You wanna do that. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I was able to expose, I was able to expose quite a bit of these triangles. And because these triangles are made of alloy, they're going to be very, very flexible, very easy to bend. So what I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna put my finger at their cuticle area to protect that. And I have a nice firm grip on their finger so they're not able to move around. Um, and I'm just going to put downward, I'm not pushing this way into the finger, I'm pushing down. Because really what I wanna do is go down like a grappling hook, grab this piece and pop it off. Okay, so just push down into the nail and then you can pry off the pieces like that. And this is exactly why I use cheapo nippers for this that I only use for nail art. So you can see it just comes right through the gel like so. And then same thing over here, downward pressure. Don't push into the cuticle area because if you accidentally slip, which is very, very common, you don't really want to stab yourself with something pointy and you sure don't want to stab the person. So that's why it's really important to concentrate, really push down into the finger and then squeeze. And then you can pry it off. Okay. And that's why these 3D little alloy pieces are great for nail art. I can even get these little beads out of here. They just pop right off. And this is how I remove pretty much everything. The more that it has an edge on it, the easier it's going to be able to get off. Um, and you can see that the gel is actually shiny underneath because we had applied that, you know, with and, and covered that area with product um, and also covered that gel with a piece of 
of um, metal and plastic. Um, so you can easily see like where the nail art was and like the little indentations where the beads were and everything. So then what I would do is go back with my hand file and I would just continue to file off enough gel that I would be able to soak off the rest of this nail if I'm soaking off, or you can continue to e-file off the rest of it, etc. Okay, so you can see how that starts to just smooth out. But it is a very painstaking process with a hand file. And the biggest thing I wanna just make sure you guys are aware of, I know I repeat myself sometimes, but it's only because I really wanna hit home with the message is just always push down into the fingernail and don't push upward into the skin. Okay, especially if you're doing this on yourself, you really wanna make sure that you've got good anchored and then you know, even to the point where you can scrape the gel off of the nail, you wanna push down like that, okay? Um, and then also the longer the nail, like let's say you're, you're removing nail art on a super long nail out here. Also make sure that you put a finger underneath the length because it hurts, you know, like if, if you're pushing on the length of someone's finger, um, especially if they have really long fingernails, it's going to put pressure on their nail bed. So really do your best to support the finger from all sides before you start prying stuff off. Because the more you're wiggling and tugging and pulling, the more it's going to feel uncomfortable. They're definitely going to feel pressure by you pushing down and prying stuff off. But if you really use your fingers to secure the nail, it's not going to be painful because they're not going to feel any of like this wiggling, tugging, tugging, pulling. Um, and you're going to protect their skin from you accidentally sliding, you know, across or up or down or whatever it might be. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're removing stuff. Um, so that's pretty much how I remove nail art. Now, when it comes to something like foil or glitter, you're going to be able to file straight through this. Like literally, if I turn my e-file on, I'll show you really quick. This isn't like a 3D piece. It's just really, really, really thin foil. So I can, once I get through the embedded gel that I put on here, see how quickly I'm able to get all that stuff off? And I can keep going until I see base coat. So once you get through that clear layer that you put on top, that's gonna to be your thickest layer. So it's gonna take you a while to get through the clear gel that you put on top to encapsulate everything. And then your color is gonna be very thin once you get through that. So it's gonna be really easy for you to go back to base coat again, okay? So that's something just to keep in mind is that anytime you encapsulate anything, you're gonna have quite a thick layer of gel on top. So it is gonna take you some time to get down to that color. And if I was soaking off this nail, like here, I'll do it on the glitter one. If I was gonna soak off this glitter, I do want to get down to that base coat in specific areas so that this gel will come off. So just come through, and again, glitter likes to fling. So you can see once I get through that initial layer of glitter, and you can see like, it's really quite an indentation of product. See how much I had embedded that stuff to make it smooth and, and to build up that apex. So once you get through that, what I usually do is I go around and I remove the majority of the gel. You don't have to get all the way down to the base coat, but if I was gonna soak this off, I would absolutely expose the base coat in a couple different areas. So like down here, and usually the cuticle area comes off pretty easily. So this is basically what I would do if I was going to soak this nail off is I would get through the majority of the product. You can do a little bit even more on the sides because top coat and all that embedded gel is really going to prevent the acetone from penetrating the sides. But typically once you get down to, this would be base coat underneath my color and a thicker layer, right? So we can e-file to it. Um, once you get this base coat exposed and you put wraps on with acetone, then at least that acetone is going to be able to penetrate to the deepest layers of product. It's going to start to eat away at all that product. And then a lot of times it just lifts everything else off. So if you're trying to soak off after encapsulating nail art, keep in mind that you're going to have to remove quite a bit of product, whether you're e-filing or you're hand filing, you want to make sure that you get that base coat exposed so that you're not sitting there with wraps on the nails for 45 minutes trying to get stuff to eat from the top down. You really want to get that acetone down to the deepest layers of the nail and let everything come off from the bottom, okay? So for those of you that you know, might be doing this on yourself, 
keep that in mind that anytime you add more product, it's going to take you much longer to soak everything off. Um, and you want to be gentle through this process as well, because if you get frustrated and it takes too long, sometimes what happens is the acetone starts burning your fingers. Um, you can get sensitivity to the acetone. Your nails might start pinching. If you have too much product on your nail and you're trying to soak it all off your nail, it might actually pinch in, which is very painful. Um, it's just from the acetone really dehydrating the nail and making it curl. Or you might just be sitting there for a good hour trying to scrape off layers of gel one by one. So the best way is even if you're doing it with a hand file, gently file in the same place, you know, and keep in mind the, the heat and the friction, but keep filing until you get down to the point where you're gonna start to see the base coat peeking through. That's really important before you put wraps on, especially if you're trying to soak stuff off. But as I always say, I think doing overlays is the best way to do it, okay? So that is how I would remove all these different types of product. I really recommend doing it with an e-file, but you can see absolutely that we're able to remove almost anything that we can encapsulate. And um, same thing goes for crystals. So even if they're Swarovski crystals, uh, Swarovski crystals are actually usually easier because we're not putting gel over the top of the crystal. We're just putting gel around. So those are usually easy to pop off as well, okay? And just, you know, Learning as you go, practice, um, knowing the fundamentals like I've been teaching you guys here is really important, but it really just comes down to you guys learning how to do this yourself in your own space and just practice. Don't get discouraged. Just keep in mind that we want to, you know, do things safely and there's really, you know, you're, you're going to get there. I hope you guys don't get discouraged by stuff because everyone has to learn how to do this. And the first time I ever learned how to do, well, actually the first time I ever tried to remove 3D nail art, it took me forever. And you get so excited about putting it on and then you don't think about taking it off. So I hope this video helps you guys be a little bit more proficient at removing 3D nail art. All right. See you guys next time. Bye.